Hello everyone, my friend and viewers at home. My name is Andrana Lin, the Bazooka Prophet, and today we'll be working on a very interesting video talking about what we call the pentose phosphate pathway, which is the PPP uh, pathway. And again, too, we should understand that this pathway can also be called some names. One of which is called the phosphogliconate pathway or the exos monophosphate shunt. Now, in this pathway, we should understand that it leads to the generation of the reduced NADPA, which is the reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, and also pentosis, which is the 5 carbon sugar, as well as the ribose 5 phosphate, which is a major precursor in the synthesis of nucleotides. That's the first point. Now, another point is that. In this pathway, it occurs in the cytosols and in plants, it occurs in the plastics. We should also understand that this pathway serves as an alternative metabolic route to glycolysis, as we have here, yeah, right? As we have right on the board, mm -hmm. for what now? For the breakdown of what of glucose to a five carbon sugar. Now, this pathway. Take note, does not lead to the formation of ATP, but it has two functions, which is what I mentioned to you earlier, talking about the first one, the uh, it leads to the formation of the reduced NADPH, which can serve for the synthesis of fatty acids and steroids, and also the ribose uh, uh, sugar. Which is a major precursor, which I've told you earlier, a major precursor for the synthesis of nucleotides and also the nucleic acids. Now, the pathway. This pathway consists of two phases, and the two phases are one, the irreversible or the dative phase, and two, the reversible non or the dative phase. Now, in this, uh, in this class, our major interest is the oxidative state, which is what we'll be working on, the oxidative phase. And in this oxidative phase, four steps are involved, and these four steps are catalyzed by four major enzymes. Talking about the first one, the glucose cis phosphate dehydrogenase, number two, the lactonase, which can also be called the cis phosphogluconolactonase. Number three, the cis phosphogluconate dehydrogenase, and lastly, the ribulose 5 phosphate isomerase. Now, this pathway is critical in the generation of two, which is for the additive state, the generation of two reduced NADP, if you do two, two reduced nicotinamide adenine the nicotine phosphate. Now, the pathway is analyzed as follows. Now, look at it. Now, we should understand that the first enzyme, which is the glucose, the, the glucose dehydrogenase, we catalyze the transfer of an hydrogen ion to this oxidized NADP plus with glucose phosphate to hit NADPH and a proton and also cis phosphogluconol delta lactone and when that happens this substrate here is then dehydrolyzed by the enzyme called the cis phosphogluconol lactonase in short lactonase in short lactonase in which there will be release of a proton and thereafter the product form is called the cis phosphogluconol gluconate and that in the step theory there will be an oxidative carbonylation decarbonate which is an oxidative decarbonylation in which this cis phosphor gluconate the 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 functional group the first the functional group which is the carbonylic functional group is removed and which is to use, to use the CO2 and the next carbon 
we now be what now all the dice to what now to a ketone functional group, which is what you have here. And when that happens, it can lead it will lead to the formation of the reduced NADP, which is the reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate with the CO2. That will now what we call the ribulose 5 phosphate. Last the last step of this of the dative irreversible step is that there will be an isomerization of this ribulose 5 phosphate to give what we call the ribose 5 phosphate, and the enzyme involved is called the ribulose 5 phosphate isomerase because it's an isomerization in this step, and that is what did, and that is what ended the, the end the, of the dative phase. In our next video, we'll talk about how as we will treat the non of the dative uh, uh, phase and we'll take our time to break it down. But for those of you who might be wondering, like, how can I draw this structure? I will do my best here to see I can draw some for you and but take note they are very very easy they are very very easy just understand it give your give give yourself and your time and also have this positive mindset that you can do it if I can do it you can so let me draw some for you but please take note of what I've explained to you here yeah. so we so I clean the ball just to make sure I Drop, us, drop some of them for you. The first one I'll draw for you is, is the glucose phosphate, which is this. This is a cyclic form. Take note. Very easy. This is H. Okay. Okay. Now look at it. This is one. Of course, the cyclic form, which I've told you in our previous video, I did. This is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, this is six. And the phosphate group is on the cis carbon here. So that's why it is called the glucose six phosphate. That's all. That, that's what it is. But in the case of the cis phosphate glucono delta lactone, very simple. This, yeah, there will be. An analysis here in which everything remains intact. The only thing that will be changing here is to just read this one. This, this, this is what we call the delta lactone. This is what we call the delta, take note, the delta lactone. Take note. So this is what we call the cis phosphor glucono delta what lactone. But in the case of cis phosphor gluconate, simple. This is is the OH from the glucose family. Okay, then as you can up where so it's very very simple. Just give yourself give your give yourself to it. So this is what we call look at it now. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six, this is six. The person will be six phosphor gluconates. So and this and that is it. Very simple. And this is what ends this part of the of the dative irreversible phase of the pentose phosphate pathway. And that's all. So see you and God bless you.